So to say a screwball doesn't exist, I would love to talk to pitching coaches that believe that because it does. It does. It was my ball did not just drift over there and I just put a little pressure. It wasn't. It was truly breaking that way. I, I probably threw it, I would say at least 60% of the games, people, you know, every batter is getting two, three screwballs. Hi, welcome to the Weekly Dose. This week we are going to be discussing the grips and spins of the rice ball and the screw ball. And we paired them together because they're quite similar. So we will talk about the rise ball first and then finish with the screw ball. The rise ball is one of the most evolved pitches. I think back when I pitched, people did have a rise ball. It was very, you know, common to use. It wasn't used as much as it is today. If you turn on the TV and you watch some college softball, most likely one of the go-to pitches that either pitcher is pitching is a rise ball. And it is very successful because it's deceiving, right? We are trying to tempt that batter to swing at something that looks so juicy and good and it's right by their eyeballs and so they want it, right? We all have teammates on our teams that cannot lay off the rise ball. And so it definitely is a pitch that you should work on. I know that after I learned to change up, the rise ball was my next pitch to learn that was taught to me. Everybody has a, a different order that pitching instructors kind of go through. And sometimes for me, it really depends on the pitchers and, and individually deciding what might be that next pitch. Sometimes it's mechanically that we have to look at that they do something that would make a rise ball hard, harder, or until they can fi fix this mechanically, right? We shouldn't really probably work on a pitch that they're gonna be unsuccessful with. So to ask your pitching coaches, why? Why do you choose this pitch? What what do you see? What do you think it'll be a strength of mine? What what mechanical attributes do I have that is going to make this successful? But it is definitely one that you have to try because it can get you lots of strikeouts and lots of fly balls, which, you know, are easy outs. So we're going to talk. I have a ball here. And when we talk about spins, for all the pitches this month, you will notice now that we are trying to get four seam rotation on the ball in the direction that we want it to go. So if that makes sense, we are trying to get a rise ball to go one, two, three, four, and we're trying to spin that ball backwards or up. Okay, so if one of the a common mistake that pitching coaches will do is they'll say, well, this is where you're going to hold the ball. Okay, yeah, get it right. I understand you have to find the grips, but everybody's hand sizes are different. You can see I have large hands. That's why I was probably really successful at spinning the ball. It doesn't matter what size hands you have, but you kind of have to adjust accordingly to make sure that the four seam rotation is able to happen. So when I was growing up, they told me to just hold the ball, right? And to hold it like this. And we'll talk about the grips in a minute. But as I was getting older, I'm like, that's not really true four seam rotation. And so I had to adjust and go up a little bit higher so I can spin that ball and you can see the four seams are gonna be right there. This was my old way, if you can see that, that when I was here, do you see how it was kind of not gonna be almost like a two seamer where it's like the one and the two were gonna go. So it was kind of like in the middle of the, the two seam and a four seam. So I had to learn to adjust a little bit higher, okay? When I do camps and clinics, I see a lot of pitchers, and I think it's more regional too because we've moved up here to Idaho and sometimes different, different places. But a lot of pitchers put their index finger on the left side of the seam. And 
that's perfectly fine because right we're still able to get that four seam rotation I always was taught to do my middle finger and I put both fingers together it, it, it I mean I could put this finger here it doesn't matter the the reason why I like the middle finger, and now remember, my hands are bigger, so it might be easier to just put your index finger here than to kind of like get a little bit of space here, but we snap with our middle finger, right? And when we create this, like, this spin, we're trying to go top to bottom and rotate it. So when we have these two fingers closer together, it's harder to, for me to like really feel like I am getting that top to bottom rotation, if that makes sense. So as I'm coming through here and I'm gonna be throwing my rise ball, I'm going to be spinning it and dropping my thumb and spinning that ball backwards. Now, with my index finger on that seam, right i can still accomplish the same thing but i would challenge you to try both ways and see which one gives you the most spin and the most rotation because that's going to give you more movement so for me i feel like my middle finger is stronger because that's what i do when i grab a doorknob right i'm like i'm rotating it all the way i don't like these fingers together not saying it's wrong it's a preference and it it all depends on hand size too. So if you're 10, 11 years old, you might start with that index finger because your hands were little when you were learning it. Now that you're older, you may try to go to that middle finger and see if it's, see what happens. It doesn't hurt to try something for five minutes and vice versa, like to go back to say, gosh, does this give you more spin or more speed this way? It all depends. So this is, I'm gonna show you here with our spin trainer. So here's the spin trainer that we have to help identify the spins quicker. This is a 10 ounce, so this is this color is the weighted one. But you can see that when I'm here and I'm spinning the ball back, right, and I'm spinning the ball, you can see that the ball is going back. So this is my four seam rotation, and if I spin that ball perfectly and I keep this flat part, to the side, then that is a pure four seam rotation. A lot of times what I will find, and, and it's very, it's, it's hard, I will tell you, everybody says, oh, get this perfect spin, but you will watch the College World Series and you will see a little bit of bullet spin and it won't, shouldn't be straight on. It should be kind of angled a little bit. And so the bullet spin is like that dot that you will see if you spin that ball real tight. So the more you can get it to this side, because we would love our balls to have their little circles, their axis on this side to spin backwards, the better. But you might find that you get a little bit tilted and it'll still rise, right? Now that's a great rise. This is a perfect rise. Um, but that's what you can strive for and to try to perfect it a little bit more. So that's what we're doing. One of the things we're not like kind of going into all of how I pitch it. We're just talking about grips and spins. But the most important part is that as your arm is coming down in its circle and its arm circle, right? Some of some of us are taught that extreme get underneath the ball like that. That's totally fine. You're going to be in a perfect place to throw that rice ball. And some are taught to be a little bit more inside of it. And as you're coming down, we've got to make sure that we can start getting our palm to face up and underneath that ball so we are in a perfect position to roll that ball and spin that ball backwards, if that makes sense for you guys. And if you don't have any questions, like please um, write, a, write them in and we can definitely help answer anything that you have. One of my secrets that I that I do in a game with the uh, rise ball is that I always kind of see the batter's armpits <laughs> or usually the armpits is what I look for and I try to draw like this imaginary line across. And that's kind of where I want to start my rise ball or where I'm kind of looking or aiming. And then what I'm hoping is that then it spins up and out of their hitting zone. So when you see this batter 
and you see my armpits, and this is where I would want to start my rise ball because the first thing they're going to do is they're going to drop their hands, and so then I can at least create a foul ball or a pop up or the best um, scenario a swing and the miss. So those are the tips with the rise. Okay, now for the screwball. The screwball is a little bit more controversial in the sense that some pitching coaches don't think it's a real pitch because there's no way you can get four seam rotation on this ball. I disagree because that is what made me the pitcher that I was, an All-American and Team USA pitcher because I relied on that. And you can ask my teammates that had to hit off of me in tryouts and the catchers that caught. It truly can work and I'm gonna tell you how I gripped it and would kind of come through and what I was trying to do with a spin. So on the screw ball, I hold my screw ball the same way as I do the rise ball. So I still want to make sure that I'm trying to get that four seam rotation. So we have our two little lines here and I'm getting underneath that ball so that, right, just like my rise ball, it's here, this four seam, okay? Or if I palm it and my palm is up, then the flat part is kind of just facing to the sky. But on the screwball, it's a little bit different. I'm gonna try to stay inside the ball and a little bit on top of the ball. And now what I'm doing is I'm creating this spin going this way as much as I can to get that perfect spin. And my spin wasn't perfect, it was great, but it wasn't perfect. So it had that little bit of a tilt to it and it still was very successful. So I'm gonna kind of show you what I did. So some, some of us, and I will say some, I will say most, if most pitchers out there who are taught a screwball are taught to throw it like bullet spin. And I will show you that you are taught to come through your, your release and spin the ball like this right? And so it's just going to come at them and then you're going to see this like bullet spin coming on this axis to the catcher. I'm going to come and I'm going to try to stay inside the ball, but I'm going to get on top of the ball. So do you see how I can get on top of this ball and I'm going to then spin the ball off to get that rotation to go that four seam. What I tried to do with the ball is instead of coming through like this, I'm going to get on top of the ball and spin the ball out of my hand to get this four seam rotation to try to keep this flat part on the bottom and have my axis be on top and bottom, right? And spinning the ball to where I want it to go, which would be into a right-handed batter or away to a lefty. So as I come in, I'm coming down, I start to then get inside. And when I really cock my wrist inside, then I'm getting on top of that ball and you can see where that spin rotation is going to be. I will add that nothing against the internal rotation mechanics because we all naturally do it. I was not taught internal rotation specifically, but my body naturally did it. I had my elbow bent with some whip. I have this loose arm that turns at the end of my release. And that's just me being an athletic pitcher and my body knew what to do, but I was not forcing it and I was not taught it. But with the internal rotation, it is going to be really hard to get a screwball. And I think that's why some pitching coaches are like, it doesn't exist. Because the minute that you're underneath the ball, do you see the difference is really, we wanna be like here. It's really hard to then get on top of that ball when you're coming down and to try to get it. So when that's when you can say, do you think the way that I throw and my mechanics are is going to allow me to have a successful screwball? Those are questions to talk to your pitching coach about, but um, that's what makes every pitcher special, unique, different, because we all are different, right? We all have little 
things that make us special, right? Like we know Danielle Laurie, like she's got that like wonderful hop at the end of her pitch. I love it. All that lay, all that weight is on that front leg that she's resisting and she brings her backside through. Like there's other pitchers that like resist so hard they kind of fall back a little bit. Um, that's gonna make or break certain pitches to be good versus great. And we all know that as pitching instructors. And so you have to make sure that you're working on a pitch that you really can be successful with depending on what your mechanics look like or how you are taught. So if you have any questions with that, I would love to answer those for you. But like I said, I hold my rise ball and my screw ball the same way to try to get that four seam rotation on that ball in the direction that I want the ball to go. So the, the, if you have a rise ball and you find that you're not getting a ton of swings or like that engagement from the batter, they're not thinking about it, then you have to work on releasing it a little bit sooner, but still having tight, fast spin to get it to be a little bit lower. And those are hard. There's pitchers out there with low rises, and I will tell you they are successful pitchers. So it's something that, right, we wanna get our good pitches great because if we have one or two great pitches, we will be okay out there. And so it's kind of finding out what your strengths are and then deciding, okay, I need to get this better. I need to get this pitch better. And then you will be successful. College coaches will say, dang, her rise ball's good. They don't even care what other pitches are because your rise ball is so good. So, or your screw ball or your curve ball, right? Whatever that pitch may be, get it great. So that means your spin can't come through like this and say it's a rise ball. You really got to strive to try to get it to be perfect. And that's all just practice and identifying good versus great, right? Do I have good spin? Do I have great spin? Do I have perfect spin? Those are questions that you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, it's just good, right? Or it's just average. Like I can't, I can do it once in a while, but not consistently. Practice. Practice. You can practice. I mean, this, I'm not plugging this, but it is wonderful. And we have the seven ounce, so it's just the same weight as a ball. But you can get that instant feedback to say, ooh, that wasn't perfect. That was great, but it wasn't perfect. Or, gosh, I just, I get a lot of wobble. Like, that means you're just not spinning it fast enough and you got to get it quicker. So you can go over to myspindoctor.com. And like I said, these are the 10 ounce and they will be coming soon within a month that we will have these as well as the, the blue seven ounce. So let us know if you have any questions and look forward to the workout of the week tomorrow. We will incorporate rise balls and screw balls and just really kind of allowing you to work through getting it great or perfect spin if you are an advanced pitcher or if you're a beginner, just kind of working on understanding what the correct spin should look like and what you should be doing. So that's what we'll be working on and I will see you next week.